Dojo is a bit of an overloaded term in the industry, but for us, uh, Dojo means a kind of immersive learning experience that um, we may set up at one of our clients. So um, normally they last for a matter of weeks, four to six weeks is kind of normal range. And we bring in a team and we start to, you know, isolate what does that team really need to learn to be successful? And so it's a kind of learning forward approach. Um, we dial down delivery pressure quite a bit to uh, create some headroom for that team to learn. And then we pair that team with uh, one or two um, expert coaches. Those coaches are there in a very hands-on way to work with the team. So a few possible things uh, that we see with dojos. One is kind of adopting a product mindset, you know, learning some new product discovery tools, getting better at that whole thing. Uh, we also see software engineering is a big topic and, you know, learning about um, good practices in engineering, clean code, that kind of stuff. And then the third major thing we see um, with dojos is kind of adopting um, the DevOps culture and some of the tooling uh, that is inherent in DevOps. So continuous deployment. So these are really kind of hard topics that are hard to learn necessarily, or even really adopt, adapt to your particular situation and say like a two day training. Not that those don't have value, um, it's that this is kind of really the team working on their own backlog, on their own problems, and adapting these practices real time to their real work. And then at the end of six weeks, they leave from the dojo kind of with this learning mindset. So, you know, a big part of the dojo is putting learning forward, learning in the flow of work, and being supported by some folks that have seen some things. Um, that know a few tricks and uh, can bring that to bear on uh, a a team. So it's a really a team experience, the dojo. Yeah, and it's one that I that oftentimes folks will get a little bit nervous about. You know, oh, you're going to make my team go away for six weeks and they're not going to get anything done, and you're off in this training for a long time. And and the answer to that is, well, no. I there this experience is about doing your own work. Uh, they, there's no contrived exercises that they're going to go off and do. They're doing the stuff that's actually valuable in their product space. So if, uh, if, their, if their product is a particular app that they work on, they're, they're still going to be working on that app. And they're going to be doing things that are valuable in that context. But the, the key is, like David said, they're going to be focused on learning more than delivery. Uh, this is where we invoke the Gene Kim, uh, improving daily work is more important than doing daily work. And by focusing on the learning, we get this powerful side effect that the delivery improves. And so uh, they'll, they'll end up delivering quite a bit. And, uh, and potentially, in, in some cases, it's actually more than they would have delivered otherwise. But we're intentionally lowering the delivery pressure so they can focus on the learning and the improvement and, and get the, uh, the delivery uh, as a as a valuable side effect um, it's a really and, good point Nate I mean we've seen we've seen some dramatic um, kind of case studies of teams going through that and initially it's like you know there's this fear of oh we can't slow down or our planning you know uh, regime isn't going to be kept up with or that kind of thing but we you know more often than not we see a s acceleration of the team um, and as Nate yeah, as you point out I mean it's it's weird but it's, it, they're not focused on speed. It's like speed is the side effect, right? They're focused on learning. Um, and so some, some really profound success stories, we've seen teams you know, shorten their delivery time. Uh, we've seen teams kind of pick up their velocity. We've seen quality gates like, uh, and quality metrics go through the roof. Um, there is an emphasis a little bit on measuring the teams and you know, give, empowering the teams through measurement and you know, coaching the teams toward using data to guide their continuous improvement efforts, which, you know, just never end, right? That's a, it's a kind of ethos and a culture and a mindset. Yeah. And the way we go about this, where we, in a dojo, we're running teams through hyper sprints. We run two sprints a week and I, you know, not a, not a one week, not a two week, not a three week sprint that we might be used to, but really, really quick because that puts pressure on the system and exposes all the friction points, all the weight states, all the things where, where time and money and value are getting lost and gives us an opportunity to then work on those. There's an opportunity to, uh, to recognize that, hey, that's slowing us down. What can we learn from that? What can we do different? What can we experiment with? 
and discover that might actually be better for both ourselves as a team, as well as uh, the organization as a whole. This is about creating humane working environments for our teams. Uh, and, and by teams, I don't mean just developers. I mean product owners and scrum masters and managers and everybody in, involved. And it's about finding ways to collaborate together and improve and, and really that, develop that mindset of constantly improving what we do that gets us then amazing productivity, again, as a byproduct, um, but one that we, we all highly value. Yeah, I think it's really kind of interesting to look at the dojo and contrast it with other kind of strategies for, um, you know, upskilling teams and improving teams. Um, and they're not necessarily all mutually exclusive, but let's take embedded coaching, for example. Embedded coaching, you may have a coach join a portfolio. That portfolio may consist of four, sometimes even like up to eight. I've seen 12 teams, you know, kind of in a scaled agile type rig. And that embedded coach kind of gets distributed across or shared or passed around to various teams. And, you know, with the dojo, the coach is squarely focused on the team for that burst of time, right? The team doesn't have to make appointments. The coach doesn't have to, you know, shortcut the team. Um, it's a really, it's a concentrated short burst. I will say for me as a coach, and I, I think, you know, the feedback I've gotten from the team members that we're doing dojo with, um, it's a very meaningful, energizing experience that really kind of stokes the, the uh, flame of continuous improvement for the teams. And, and, you know, as a coach, I really appreciate having that ability to focus and get to know the quirks of the team, you know, get to know people on an individual level beyond just like, you know, crushing the technical component of it. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, you know, when I think about the, the motivations, right, Daniel Pink's uh, autonomy, mastery and purpose. I, the dojo does so much to re-energize those things and help teams that have been struggling or uh, that, that have, you know, where morale has suffered for various reasons to really rediscover uh, what makes them passionate and engaged in their work. And, uh, and I've seen teams, I've, I've worked with teams that, uh, that came in just struggling and overburdened and uh, where there were attrition risks and all kinds of things. And they came out on the other side, just thrilled with their jobs and, and recognizing or, or acknowledging that this is actually what I hired on to do. And I, I've just not had the chance to do this uh, where, I, where I have the power to make decisions, where I can master my craft and where I'm really focused on purpose on value outcomes for my customers yeah i, I we had a an interesting story uh at a large finance large financial services organization we had one team came in uh that came in and the feedback at the end is was uh like we came in as a team and we left as a family which is you know not an outcome you can always expect but it certainly warms your heart when you when you hear stuff like that this team actually went on um to create a um internal hype video of their own accord uh, promoting the dojo experience. So they kind of came out of this with a little bit of a spiritual warrior mentality. Um, and, you know, those are certainly great success stories that, um, you know, we continue to look for. Yeah. And that enthusiasm and energy is just infectious across the organization and can do so much for driving the culture of engineering that you really want, right? Making it a place so that people want to come to work makes it easier on your recruiting, easier on your retention, you get higher quality work. You know, we could go on and on and on. Such just such a powerful thing for uh, for energizing and uh, and engaging your your teams and and getting them the liberating them really to to do their best work.